I don't know why God made one bedroom apartment out of state. I don't know why he made hometowns if it's somewhere I can't stay. I don't know why he made growing up, but I guess that we're all gonna. Yeah, I don't know a lot of things, but I know why God made mamas. For the open arms to fall into, for the when you don't know what to do, for the phone call saying don't forget I'm always in your corner. For the heart that makes a house a home, for the knowing that you're not alone, for the darling don't you dare give up even when you wanna. Yeah, that's why God made mamas. For putting band-aids on a scraped up knee and wiping tears away For picking up the pieces when that dream don't go your way For always giving more than taking, always knowing what you need And showing you that fighting's always best done on your knees For the open arms to fall into for the when you don't know what to do For the phone call saying don't forget I'm always in your corner For the heart that makes a house a home For the knowing that you're not alone For the darling don't you dare give up Even when you wanna Yeah, that's why God made mama down here so hard to do but I know why God made mamas cause he knew I needed you oh, 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 oh for the open arms to fall into for the when you don't know what to do for the phone call saying don't forget I'm always in your corner for the heart that makes a house so home for the knowing that you're not alone For the darling don't you dare give up Even when you wanna Yeah, that's why God made mamas oh, oh, oh. Amen. Thank you, Jessica. <clears throat> well, if you have your Bibles this morning, I'm going to ask you to find 2 Kings. We're going to divert off of Joshua for just a, a week or so uh, and go to 2 Kings chapter 4. And we want to think about moms and Mother's Day today. And as you're turning there, I want to remind you, Revival starts next Sunday uh, morning. And if you're here and a guest today, we invite you to be back. We'd love to have you uh, come and, and participate with us as we have our revival services Sunday through Wednesday. Sunday night will be at 6 o'clock. Monday through Wednesday will be at 7 o'clock. And so uh, if you can, drop by and uh, we'd love to have you be a part of our revival services uh, any one of those nights. And love to see you here. Well, we want to think about moms this morning, and uh, I want to think about the influence, mom, that you have or you can have potential. Uh, and so we're going to see that from 2 Kings chapter 4. Uh, so if you have found your place in God's Word, I invite you to stand. And we stand out of reverence and respect for reading of the Word of God as part of our worship this morning. We're in 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. We're only going to read the first seven verses today. It says, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all of your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. 
And when you've come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, and then pour it into all those vessels, and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full, then she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. And then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day that we set aside to honor our moms. We thank you for mothers. We thank you for what they mean to each and every one of us. And, and God, we pray today that as uh, we worship together, we'll make that commitment that we will be uh, people of God, worthy of, of influence, that others might follow us and follow our example. And today the emphasis is on moms. And so, God, I pray that we'd have godly moms that would influence other people for your kingdom. And, Lord, we ask and pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I mean, you may be seated. You know, for, for some people in the world, it's important to make their mark. Uh, people want to be remembered for something, and, and, you know, and it, it may be any number of things. It may be that they built this huge house on the hill and everybody drives by and sees it, and, and they want people to remember all that. But, you know, it's amazing that what, what lengths people will go to to be remembered. Uh, I've looked up the Guinness Book of Records and just found a few odd ones that I wanted to share with you just to show you. You know, there's normal things in the Guinness Book of Records, like the tallest man in the world. Uh, he was 8 foot 11 inches tall, the best I could tell from reading. The shortest person in the world was 21 and a half inches tall. Now, that, you know, that's pretty, pretty normal kind of stuff. But how about this one? There was a, a, a group wanted to have the largest swimsuit photo in the world. So 1,010 women wore their bikinis out on the beach and they took a, a picture just so they'd be in the largest photo shoot uh, with swimsuits. 30,000 people gathered to grill one time so that they would have the biggest barbecue in the world and be in the Guinness Book of Records, you know, just, just to, uh, to be known. Uh, there's two different people. I don't know which one is the, is the actual the winner, but uh, the longest fingernails in the world. I mean, those are some nasty things, too. And you see them curling around, and they're like eight foot long or something. Just to be in the Guinness Book of Records, just so people will remember them. Uh, how about this one? The longest kiss in the world lasted 58 hours, 35 minutes, and 58 seconds. Now, that's more than two days. If I, if I can, 24 and 24 is 48, right? Man, people will go to all kinds of lengths to make their mark in the world. Well, moms, I want you to know that you have the greatest opportunity to make a mark in the world. You can have an influence upon children and grandchildren that will last them for all of eternity, not just for the next few years, but you can change their eternity. You want to make a mark? You be faithful. Live for the Lord. You be the, the woman that God has called you to be, a woman of faith. And you will make your mark. They will remember you. Grandchildren will remember you. I remember my grandmother because of all the things that, that she did for me. I remember my great-grandmother. You probably do, too. My great-grandmother was a little bitty short Dutch woman. The thing I remember about her was when we would go to her house, she had these tea cakes that she always had in a little cookie jar. And we'd always go to the kitchen. And she cooked, by the way, with one of those old stoves that you put wood in. You know, that's how she cooked her tea cakes. She had the best little tea cakes in the world. They will remember you. What is it they're going to remember about you? Hopefully, they're going to remember that you were a woman of faith, that you loved the Lord, that you served God, and that He was important. We're studying this morning about this woman uh, who was one of the married to a sons of the prophets. Her husband was a man of God, if you would. And she's come across a very trying time. He's died. He's no longer there. She has debts to pay. She has two children, two boys to take care of. Where is she going to do? What is she going to do? Let's see how this woman influences her children, what difference she makes, and can we do the same thing? Well, I want you to first notice her allegiance. What, what, is, she, what is her alliance? What is she, she loyal to? What's the most important thing to her? Well, I'm going to show you in just a second. It, it's her faith and it's her family. That's what matters. That's what matters to her. We see in verse first couple of verses, she's a son of the prophets. She, she's married to a man of God. He has died, 
And, and, and now she has bills to pay. The creditors are going to come and get her sons and make them slaves. In this day and age, that was common. If you couldn't pay your bills, one of the children would go and become an indentured servant, if you would. And they would work off the debt. And, and so that's where she's at. She, she's in a desperate time, a desperate situation. What do you do? Well, you could just let the creditor come and get your two boys and let them work off the debt. That's something you could do. But that's not what she's going to do. This is a woman of faith. She has, she has been married to a man of God. She knows what it means to walk by faith, live by faith, trust God to take care of them. That's how she's lived. And so all of a sudden she doesn't change just because hard times have come. She's not going to change her way, no. She's just going to continue living by faith. Her allegiance is, is to the Lord God himself. That's who she's loyal to. So what happens? What's the first thing that she does when he dies? She goes and finds the prophet Elisha. She says, I don't know what I'm going to do, but here's another man of God, and I'm going to go get some guidance. I'm going to go and ask God to give me leadership, guidance. Show me what to do through the man of God, Elisha. Her allegiance was to her faith, and her sons would see this. They would understand that mom has gone to Elisha, and Elisha is going to tell them what to do. And they'll see whether it works or not. They'll see if God is true or not. They will see if God is really faithful or not. And so, first of all, her allegiance was to her faith. She didn't run off and, and ask the world to give her food stamps. She didn't do any of those things. She went to the Lord and said, God, you know where I'm at. You know what I'm facing. You want to be a mother of influence? Influence your children by your faith. Let them see your faith in action. Not just words. Anybody can talk about being a child of God. Anybody can say, oh, I love the Lord. Oh, I, I, I love my church. You can say that all day long. But listen, when, when the rubber hits the road, so to speak, and, and there's desperate times, where do you go to then? Do you really trust the Lord? And do you go to him first? She went first to him. But think about also her loyalty to her family as well. It was custom that, that the, the sons could have been given off as, as bond servants. And, and they could have been forced to pay the debt off. She could have done that. But she didn't want to see her children in bondage. She didn't want to see her children made indentured service, bond servants, slaves. She wanted to free them from this, this bondage that they had a potential to go into. And so her loyalty was not only her faith in God, but her loyalty was to her, her family as well. I'm going to protect my family. I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure my children aren't slaves. Mom, the Bible tells me that we're all sinners and that we are all slaves to sin until the Lord Jesus enters into our heart. Until we are born again. Until our sins have been washed away and we have been made white as snow. Until we have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are in bondage. We are sold out to the enemy of God. Mom, you be, a, you, you be faithful to your family and do not Give up on your children. Do not give up on your grandchildren. Love them into, the, into God's kingdom. Love them. Love them no matter what they do. Continue to be an influence to them. Continue to pray for them. Be an example before them. Do not settle for, well, you know what? I tried and I tried, but it's just, it, it's just over. They're, they're, just, they're just never coming to the Lord. They're never going get, to get right with God, and I've just, I'm going to give up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up on your children. Don't ever stop praying for them. Pray for those children every day. Pray for those grandchildren every day. Lift them up. You be a, a woman of influence. A, a, and let them know what you're loyal to. I'm loyal to the Lord Jesus first. And I'm loyal to my family. I love my family. And my family knows it. And they know I pray for them. And they know that I want what is best for them. Mom, be concerned about their bondage. What, what, is, what, is, what has them enslaved? Are, are they enslaved to alcohol? Are, are they a workaholic? Uh, are, are they enslaved to some things that, that you don't even want other people to know? Well, don't settle for that. Pray for those folks. Pray for those children. Ask God to do a great work in their lives. 
So you can influence them by your allegiance, who it is you are loyal to. I want you to notice her substance, though. Notice what she didn't have. I mean, she had nothing. Verse 2, so Elisha said to her, what, what shall I do to you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? What have you got? What is it that we might can work with? And she said, listen, all I have is just one little jar of oil. That's it. Probably olive oil wasn't worth a whole lot. That's all she had. Listen, she, her, her sufficiency was, was such that, that they were going to starve to death. She couldn't, she couldn't afford to pay the debts. She could, couldn't afford to feed the family. She had absolutely nothing personally. But they were okay because she had God. She had the Lord in their lives. Listen, we need to understand that, that our children, our grandchildren, they don't need all the wealth of the world. They don't need us to give them huge houses, big cars. They need the Lord Jesus more than they need anything else. They need to see your example of trusting God, living for Him, loving Him. That's what they need more than anything else. You may not have the wealth of the world. That's okay. You have faith in a God that is all-sufficient. That is all, all able. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He can provide. And he will. So let's think about her, her substance. What did she have? She had very, very little. But she did know a God who was more than sufficient. And he took care of her. He prayed for her. All she had, he prayed for her. He took care of her, provided their needs. Excuse me. All she had was this one jar of oil. As I thought about that, this oil, you know, the Spirit of God often, I think, is, is compared to oil in scriptures. Uh, when Aaron was anointed the, the priest, the high priest, for the very first time, they anointed him with oil. They set him apart, consecrated him with oil. They poured oil on his head, uh, indicating that he was set apart for God. In the Psalms, David was talking about when he was anointed king of Israel, and, and he too was anointed with oil. They anointed his head with oil, indicating he was set apart unto God for his service. Well, you and I have been set apart by the Spirit of God who lives within us. You can say you, you have the oil of God within you. <coughs> he lives within you. And it may be that you don't think you have a whole lot of anything, but you've got God. You have the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God living within you. And God is sufficient to do anything you need. He can take care of all of your needs. In Matthew, <clears throat> excuse me, Matthew and Mark both, I believe, but in Mark for sure, uh, there's, a, there's a story of, of Jesus teaching on the hillside. And, and there was thousands there, 5,000 at one point, 4,000 at another time, with men and, and, and men and women and children there as well. And it came time to eat. You know the story. There wasn't but five loaves of five, five little fishes. Well, let me get the story right because I was unforgot. <clears throat> Which was it? Five loaves of bread and two fish. Five loaves of bread and two little fishes. Little bitty, not much, and yet it was sufficient to feed all those. God can do much with little. You may not have but a little bit of the Spirit of God li living within you, you think. If you've got the Spirit of God, you've got all of Him. But how much of you does he have is the question. So you have God living within you. And that spirit of God is all sufficient to do anything you need him to do. According to the will and the plan of God in your life. Mom, listen. You can pray for those children. You can have an influence for those children. You can, you can be used of God to move and, and God will move in ways that, that, that they never even dreamed. Don't give up on your children. Pray for your children. Be an example before your children. Live out your faith before them. You have the Spirit of God, the all of God within you. That's all she had, but all she had was enough when God took care of it, when God blessed it, and when God used it. You may think you don't have a whole lot of talents. You may feel like you know, you're not the, the, the best businesswoman in the world. You may not think that you're the, the smartest woman in the world, but you have God living within you. You have everything you need to be a good mama. You have everything you need to be an example before your children, to point them to Christ, to live an example before them. The Spirit of God within you will enable you to walk by faith, to trust God, 
to live a life of obedience, to do everything that God needs you to do so that you can be an influence on those, those kids, those grandkids. Her substance, she didn't have a lot, but she had God, and that was all she needed. That was all she needed. Well, what about her obedience? It, it, can she make an influence, can she make an impact on her kids by being obedient to the Lord God? Let's see what she does. Verse 3. <coughs> and then he said, Go bar vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And notice he warns her there, Don't gather just a few. And when you have come in, shut the door behind you, you and your sons, and begin pouring oil into the vessels. So here's what Elias tells them to do. <clears throat> so I want you to canvas the neighborhood, and I want you to find empty jars. Gather as many as you can gather. You see, but it's going to make a difference. She doesn't understand it yet. All she knows is she's been told to do something. But eventually, the number of jars she gathers is going to matter, is going to amount to the number of oil she gets that she can eventually sell. Little faith or big faith? God said, I'm going to fill the jars. Now again, all she's got is one jar. They go gather all the pots. Everything they can find in the town is what it indicates to me. She gathers every empty vessel in this little neighborhood. Now we already know she's a woman of faith because she went to Elisha to start with. But now is she going to be a woman of obedience? Is she going to obey what the Word of God told her to do? And is she going to go do it all? Is she going to have a little faith and just gather three or four jugs? Or is she going to gather every single empty one she can find. I think she gathered every single empty one she finds. She is a woman of obedience. And, and God is going to bless her obedience. They're going to start filling up these jars one by one, one by one. And eventually it comes to the place where she says, give me another jar. And there wasn't another jar. And Scripture says immediately the oil stopped pouring. You see, it was all based on her faith. Had she only gathered three or four jars, all they would have had was three or four jars of oil. Would that have paid the bills? Don't know. Would that have fed the family with the money left over? Don't know. Probably not. But her face, God said, here's what I want you to do. And she did it. It says they went, he says, go from, from all your neighbors, all your neighbors, gather all the empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. When you've come in, shut the door. So she went from him. She shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the vessels. Indicate they gathered a lot. They gathered many. Your faith makes a difference. Your faith before your children makes a difference. Do you trust God for just the little things? Do you trust God just a little enough to go to church and, and tell your children to go to church? Or you trust God completely with the big things? With everything. Lord, I'm trusting you to take care of us. I'm praying a hedge about my family today. I want my kids to know that. I pray for them every single day. I, I, I'm praying for my grandbabies. I'm praying even now for the, the man or the woman they might marry someday. Do your children know <clears throat> that you're, you don't have just a little faith? You have big faith. You have faith in God for all things. Influence your children in that way. God provides. God provided based on their faith. Now, <clears throat> I have debated whether, whether to go into this a whole lot or not, and I don't think Mother's Day is the right day to do it. But based on her faith is what she was blessed. Now then, this was God's plan. God told her to do that. And that's a, there, there's a difference right there. If God leads you to do something, you by faith, you go and do it to the very best of your ability, to the biggest of your ability. I, I, well, I'm going to go a little bit because this has just been on my heart. We're praying for family, church family, who are sick. And we immediately want to say, well, if I have big faith, then God's going to answer big prayers and, and God's going to heal them because that's what we're praying. But here's what I want to remind you of. God, this is, God led them, led this lady to do that. He told her to gather the vessels. He go, told her to pour the oil. He led her to do these steps. As we're praying for our loved ones, Jenny and Miss Ann and Jeff and others, I need to pray according to the will of God. And if I, if I pray as God has led me to pray, 
then I can count on God doing big things. God's going to answer the prayers that He leads me to pray. Now, it's our desire that all three, all four, whoever we're talking about are healed without any question. But it may be God's plan to heal them by taking them home to glory. And see, we don't even think, we don't want to talk about that, and I understand that. But my faith, as I step out and trust God and pray, as God leads me, God answers those prayers that He has led me to pray. Now, how can I pray for Jenny, for example? Well, right now, Jeannie needs to have an appetite. And I can pray every day, every morning, Lord, help Jeannie have an appetite so she can eat, so that her, her strength will be strong and that she can start taking her treatments again. For Miss Ann, I know Miss Ann, this is brand new news, and, and she's, she's scared. Wouldn't you be scared? Pray for Miss Ann. I know I can pray that, that God will calm her nerves and that God will give her peace of knowing He's with her. Now, I'm still not praying God heal them because God has not told me to pray that particular prayer. You understand what I'm trying to say? Here, God told her step by step what to do, and God showed out big time. He, he filled every single vessel she could find. Now, if... Every day, ask God to show you how to pray for our family members, our church, our church family. Lord, what do I need to pray for Jeff today? What does he need today? And as God impresses upon your heart, you pray that prayer, and God will answer that prayer big time. He will hear, and he will answer. If God leads you to pray for their healing, by all means, pray. By all means, if, if, if it's my child, I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be begging God to heal. But just understand, as I'm praying that, God may choose to heal in glory. And He may choose to do that. Pray as God leads you to pray. And God will, He will come through. He will hear your prayer that He's led you to pray. And He will answer it as only God can answer and I think that's enough to say. Uh, I, again, that's maybe a whole other sermon. So, here, Mom, Mom I wanna, you, you want to be influential. What, what are you le, le, aligned with? What are your loyalty? Are you lo, loyal to God? Loyal to faith and family? You may not have a lot, but you've got the Spirit of God. And He will lead in God. He will strengthen. He will help you. Listen, are you obedient in all things? Are you just obedient in the little things? Do your children see you have big faith? I trust God with big things. You know, you, you get sick, you have to have surgery. I'm trusting God to take care of this. Let them know and hear and see. If you will do all those things, you will be remembered. I said, you know, everybody wants to make a mark. Everybody wants to be remembered for something. Mom, you be a, 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 a godly woman before your children, and it will make a difference. Let's, let's look at the very last few verses. <clears throat> it says in uh, verse 6, Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There's not another vessel. So the oil ceased. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil, pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. So here's what happened. They, they, they filled every single pot they could find. Every single one of them was full. They filled them all, and she's still ready to pour some more out of her, her original jar now. Remember, her original jar, it just keeps refilling, refilling. And finally, they fill up every single pot they could find. And, it, and the oil stops pouring. That's all they needed. That's all they had. God, God had, had done what he promised to do. So they go to Elijah and they said, here's the oil. Here's everything that we've, we've gathered up. And he says, go sell it. Pay your debt and live off the rest. They had enough oil that, that her boys did not have to become servants, slaves. They had enough oil that, that they could sell it and live for, for a few weeks, months. I don't know how long. But they could live off of it for a while. Now here, think about this. Here's two sons who've grown up a preacher's kid. Now, they've, they've watched Dad work and do all whatever he did as, as, a, as a prophet. And Mom was home. <clears throat> now, Dad has passed away, and Mom is there trying to protect her family. And this <clears throat> Elisha comes along, and he tells them, I want you to uh, gather vessels and pour oil until it stops pouring. Well, that sounds kind of strange, but Mom did it. And by faith, Mom did it. And lo and behold, that oil just kept pouring and pouring and pouring. 
And all of a sudden, they had, they had pots of oil everywhere. The boys didn't have to become slaves. I think I would remember that for sure. And they had enough oil they could sell, and they lived the rest of their days. Now, these boys grow up. <clears throat> they're 30 years old now, and they're looking back on their life. Do you think they're going to remember the time that by faith, mom did what this prophet told them to do, and they, they, the boys, went and gathered all these empty pots, and they brought them, and one by one, they would hand them to mom, and she just kept pouring and pouring and pouring. Do you think they're going to remember that? Yes, they're going to remember that. They'll never forget the time that mom by faith trusted God and God proved himself. Yes, they will remember it. All of their days they remember it. Listen, mom, you walk by faith. You be obedient to God. <clears throat> you trust him. You trust him and you remain faithful to him and to your family. And when your kids grow up, they absolutely will remember that and it will make a difference in their life. These two boys, they're going to come to a time where there's a crisis in their life. I wonder where they'll go. My guess is say they're going to go back to the Lord and they say, listen, here's what mom did when th difficult times came. We went to God. I think I'm going to do that too. They will follow your example. You want to make a mark? You want to make a difference in the lives of people, especially your family? You be faithful to the Lord. You be obedient. Ask God to give you big faith. Big faith. Not just little faith. Big faith. And you trust Him and you see if God doesn't make a difference in your life. I want to remind you though, this all begins by walking with Christ. You must know Him personally. There must be a relationship, not just know about him, not just be a Sunday school member. You know Jesus. You have a relationship with him. And because of that relationship, when difficult times come, he is the very first one you think of running to. He's not down the list four or five. No, I know Christ and he's my best friend. I'm going to go to him first. Do you have that kind of relationship with him? If not... You need to start it today. I'm going to ask you to stand. <clears throat> our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed.